Welcome to From the South. Let's go live to Kazan, Russia, where the President Vladimir Putin is offering statements, the final statements of the 16th BRICS summit. This year, Brazil resides in the in the G20, and it's worth to mention that we know what is, is the situation and its development surrounding Russia, and we don't want to transfer to the situation to other institutions. As a matter of our issues, we're going to solve it for our own and put some perspective to strengthen other kind of corporations uh, regarding to logistic industry, high technology, and other key spheres to use it in as a collaboration among other countries in culture, sports, and the youth sphere. We're also going to fulfill our goals and this summit in Kazan is open format for all and its member countries are willing to work to achieve their goals and also to reject to the attempts from the exterior to impose their will and their focus. We cannot answer to the requirements of collaboration from the pressure of the BRICS and we have introduced the category of associated countries. This year we've been talking about these issues in the frames of bilateral meetings and we have held a several conversation trying as well our delegation to set meetings with the heads of states of member countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the summit has finalized and I want to thank you all of you and all the colleagues here in Kazan for the collaboration, for the support of our work. And it's worth to mention that I am guessing that is being successful in the frame of this presidency. We feel the support of the member countries. It is important because this work continues till the end of these years and we have different joint events. As I, as I said, next year we're going to pass the presidency, the chairmanship to Brazil and we're going to support to our colleagues from Brazil and to coordinate the work with all our associates to strengthen our cooperation in the frame of the cooperation. I want to thank as well to the authorities of the Republic of Turkestan to for the efforts to set this good environment for the summit. And I want to ask for forgiveness to the cities of Kazan because they had to face some closure of highways in the frame of the summit. But I have to say that it hasn't being in vain. I want to thank you for the creation for of a good atmosphere of this work. We cannot talk for a long time to answer your questions because I have bilateral meetings scheduled this afternoon and I cannot make my colleagues wait in. So the questions, please. Anton Berninsky, Channel 1. Can you detail the financial collaboration among the BRIC countries? It's been discussed in the platform of investment and it's been, dis it's been discussed the creation of a payment of alternative way. It's been speaking of a sort of alternative. Thank you. The SLIF and the alternative, we haven't created any alternative. Despite this, it's a very important question because today, nowadays, one of the current issues is the one with the payments and that's why we continue the way of the usage of national currencies and speaking about payment system, we need to create the financial interchange system created by our national bank and speaking of other 
member countries of the RIG also had a system and we're going to use it and we're going to develop this interactions and collaboration. But speaking of our, our joint system, we haven't achieved that yet. We have now a sufficient situation to take the correspondent decisions in an administrative level. We have been discussed with colleagues and we're going to follow that path. Next, road two, please. It has been the first time, the first summit of BRICS as an association with a broader geography, and it has been mentioned that it is predicted a broadening of this uh, group. And it has been, we have been working on the formats of associate com, uh, countries. Could you share with us what is the, the main sign of this summit for the broadening of this organization? I said already that there's a lot of interest in this work, in this BRICS uh, group, and the 35 countries have been particip participated in Kazan. We have addressing several issues related to the broadening, and we will pay. We will follow the path to create the associate countries, and we have agreed on the list and some of the countries have been participating in the events of today and yesterday and they have passed their proposals and requests for their full participation within the framework of the BRICS association group and it's the situation is going to be developed and we will be sending the uh, invitations and proposals to the future associate, associate countries to participate in this condition to the events of our group. And if we decide, if, if we receive a positive answer, we will announce to which countries will be in this list. But we won't do it before receiving the answer to of our uh, asso asso uh, partnerships. Partners, next, please. Good afternoon. We know that during the bilateral encounters, they, we, you have been talking about the conflict in Ukraine. How has, how this has been discussed, and what are the opinions of the partners of this conflict, and have we addressing the support of to our country? We all want that the conflict ends uh, immediately f in an amicable way. China and Brazil has advocated for an initiative. They have proposed an initiative within the framework of the UN G General Assembly in New York. Many British countries have supported this initiative and we are being are grateful f to our partners for uh, putting attention to in this uh, area and uh, finding the solutions. Please come come here and Mi Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President. The satellite images indicated that in that the North Korean troops uh, are in Russia. Uh, so, is it an escalate? Is is it an escalation of the uh, the the conflict in Ukraine? And uh, at the brink of the U.S. elections, uh, Russia has been accused of meddling. And uh, so, what do you were being discussing about? Uh, with the U.S. officials. So, well, let's begin by your first question. The satellite images, it is a serious thing. If there are images, they reflect something. I want to, I want to highlight that the Russian actions are not the ones who uh, trigger the escalation in Ukraine conflict, but publicly, the U.S. administration 
uh, allocated to uh, allocated resources supplies to Ukraine and it is not the path to, towards the escalation they we were deceit about this and, and I think that uh, you have ar already listened to, to the news that uh, an array of, of European leaders have been deceiving us because they have been preparing the, the Ukrainian army. And so regarding the escalation, Western countries have been supporting the Kyiv regime as as a result the participate the direct participation of nato military has been there there in this conflict and we know that the way they they do with the launching launching of missile drones and vehicles in the black sea in and uh, we know who, who, what are the countries participating, and this has to do with the military instructors. I am not referring to other military, but uh, I am referring to the use of missiles. They attack the Ukrainian military attack, and they cannot do it without the satellite uh, system and the Western systems but only with the partic direct participation of the NATO officials uh, regarding our relations, relations with the DPRK. Today, we have ratified our agreements on the strategic association and on Article 4. We have not excited that the, the North Korean authorities see our agreements, take our agreements seriously. But the way we do this is our business in, within the framework of this article. So we, we, must, uh, we must go on negotiating negotiations with our DPRK's friends, and let's see how this process will be developed in any case. We will be. We are working actively and seriously, and we are advancing. And uh, the the in the incursion of the, the Ukrainian. Well, we are talking about thousands of people. So there are attempts to unblock this unit without. Uh, overseas and they are not successful and the Russian army um, went on to the elimination of this group regarding the our, our business with Trump it is a matter that we addressed over we have been addressing over a year and a long time ago we were accused uh, we were accused and Trump was accused of having uh, links with Russia, but uh, the, in the United States, they have revealed that it is not like that, that it is a lie and uh, that has not taken place and there wasn't a before or a now. So, so that, that's the way the, uh, well, the relations between Russia and the United States depends on the U.S. and if they are open to build up relations with Russia, we will do the same. But if they don't want it, we then that decision that that is the decision of the U.S. future administration. Please. Good afternoon. Continuing with the uh, Trump's conversation, the former President uh, Trump and the presidential candidate said that on the, the uh, conversation they held with you, you uh, uh, he threatened you to attack Moscow. Uh, so what do you think about the great policy now, even the, in the conversations between leaders are being leaked at the public opinion and another questions about the summit do you feel isolated right now do you miss 
to communicate with Western colleagues. The first part, uh, uh, yes, they can threaten. You can th uh, to R Russia. It, it doesn't make any sense because that only encourages us. But I ha I didn't hold any conversation with Trump. I don't remember. There is an active phase of the elect of the U.S. electoral campaign, and I propose you to to see these messages seriously regarding the, what uh, Trump said uh, before. He talked about the aspiration of doing everything to end the conflict with Ukraine. And I think that he said it uh, uh, sincerely, sincerely, and, the, and we uh, congratulate those statements. Uh, re concerning isolation, we have to say that we receive uh, different signals by by our uh, Western uh, partners, and we haven't. Uh, we uh, initially, even with the European leaders, uh, we haven't rejected any contact with the European leaders. Not before and not now. If someone wants to negotiate with us, we are open to do it, and we always said it. We always say it, um, but not, we know we do not impose those negotiations. Our economy continues to grow, and last year we have 3.4 percent of economic growth, and the the European economy has be, has been regressing, and there's some growth, 3.1 percent. It is not bad, but anyway, they have enough problems, and there there is a sh deficit in three areas of uh, external trade and in other sectors, and they also have a big debt, 3.4 percent, 3.3 trillions of dollars uh, of debt. And so we we have to think about uh, resolving these matters, and that's what we do within the BRICS framework. A couple of questions more, and we end our, our Africa's uh, guests. Thank you very much. Do we have a translation from French? I am Sikom Sumer, reporter of Cameroon, Mr. President. Our team has just come back from Donbass, and, and we are preparing a documentary to show the reality of what's been happening in Donbass and to tell the Africa about it. And we know, President, that African countries are victims of terrorism and other, um, other scorches to destabilize the states of Africa. Concurrently, we, we see that Russia is helping out the uh, center, Central African Republic and other uh, countries of the region. Before, there were other countries present in that region, but only after the presence of Russia, we managed to stabilize the situation in many countries. That's why my question is, is it not time to, the, for Russia to deepen this type of cooperation? not only in the military area, but also to develop relations with the African states in other sectors. I agree with you. Uh, this is 
this is uh, the, our work consists in, uh, uh, in it. Uh, we consider that the creation of the BRICS group is uh, regarding this work, and so in the future, uh, in the future, in the near future, I have just uh, sp spoke about, uh, uh, spoke with our colleagues, and we said that uh, countries like uh, Russia, China, and Saudi Arabia are going to develop actively, and uh, there's going to be a, a breakthrough, but there are uh, regions in the world, uh, according to our view, the development is going to be is going to uh, to take place in an active way it is we are talking about the uh, south south asia and africa and so for in the BRICS we have we have uh, proposed a platform of investments with the use of electronic electronic uh, devices to create this, this system that could that could lead and uh, and we can manage to do it to create conditions for inve for investments effectively and to create for markets in these in those regions mostly in Africa because we uh, thought about it and I think that they will agree wi with me and there are different reasons because in these countries uh, the population is growing and in Africa yesterday I talked with Prime Minister of India, India and there 10 million people are born every year that's the annual growth of India and in Africa it happens rapidly the same. Secondly, uh, there's going to be developed the level of urbanization so the people and the country the peoples and the countries are going to advance and to reach the the life levels, the quality of life levels compared to other regions of the world, even with Europe. All of it and other factors shows all the other indicators show that these uh, global regions we have to pay attention to these uh, regions of the world and so that's why we attempt and create uh, work groups uh, based on the BRICS development uh, bank to create an effective mechanism for these countries and I think that all will benefit from it and so the same as the ones who invest and those who receive the investments because there's going to be the creation of protection centers and of, of investment centers and so we will be creating mechanism which will not be dependent on the political situation and I think that we can achieve it. Thank you very much for your questions. It is a really important question. And the final question, BBC please, which is a, a strange uh, guest, uh, Steve Frosenberg, please. I have read the final declaration of the BRICS in which it is uh, said about the, the need of global stability and security and a fair world. The motto of the presidency of, of, of Russia within BRICS includes these uh, presets of justice and security. How can you how can you relate all this with what you have been doing in the latest years with the uh, attack on Ukraine? Where is the stability, security, mostly the security of Russia? Because before the um, special military operation, there weren't any attacks on Russia or on Russian cities or any foreign um, troops uh, occupying the territory of Russia and, and the last what's the relationship with all of it with the statements of the British uh, delegations with the target of, that that the target of Russia is to sow chaos and uh, destruction in the streets of 
of Great Britain. Well, I'm going to begin with the stability of Russia. That uh, those attacks with drones, there wasn't, there, there weren't before, but there was there was a, a war situation. The situation consisted in the fact that we, our constant proposals to improve the contacts and relations relations with the Western countries, they. They will also. They will. They always um, locate us. Uh, they will always tell, told us our position, our place. They will. They always uh, pointed out our position, and in the end, this will lead us to a, situ a worse situation of becoming a secondary country that only has raw materials and furthermore with the loss of the sovereignty of the country. And in this case, uh, Russia wouldn't exist. Russia wouldn't exist if it loses its sovereignty. And that's the main thing, the, the exit of Russia from this situation and the consolidation of its ind independence in the last years means the growing of our security, our consolidation and the creation of and the consolidation of our state sovereign and independent. And regarding the partners with the BRICS, they respected our independence, our traditions. And so those who respect in matters in terms of justice, in terms of development and security, in terms of this question, I will try to respond to you. I think that justice, that it is justice in terms of development. Lately, the, the events during the COVID-19 pandemics, what, uh, what was happening at that time, I want to note the, your attention to pay, atten to pay attention on this, that at that time, at the, in the United States, the United States uh, take the mission allocate six billion dollars in the European zone and uh, so they allocated these resources to markets uh, Europe and the United States and it, it has to do with the pharmaceutical industry the vaccines that today they eliminate because that stage uh, past and so right now it is the food crisis and what they ha what economists have been doing they used their position of leaders in the world and they have printed the currencies and they withdrew their products we we think that it's not fair and so that's why we have to change the situation. And that's what we have been doing in the BRICS. Regarding security uh, of Russia, I have already addressed. I understand what you said, but is it just from the point of view of security during years to disregard our demands of not broaden the NATO? Is it uh, fair to to tell us lies about this broadening? Is it just to, to approach to us? For example, in Ukraine, they began to construct military bases. Is it fair to, to, to make a coup that I have mentioned responding the question of your colleague? They all go against the 
humanitarian the 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 international right and to force the situation to an active phase is it fair from the point of view of the food security to undermine all agreements within the the international framework as all countries spoke about that they cannot we cannot guarantee the security of a country and undermine the security of another country it is about our security if we if we talk about the broadening of nato there's no justice so we want to change this situation and we will reach to it what was the last question Re regarding the statements of of the British authorities that Russia is sowing chaos on the British streets? Thank you for reminding me. Reminding me this, it is uh, it is uh, f uh, well. We have to understand what's been happening in the European streets is the results of the internal policies of those states. And we know, I have already mentioned, that this decision, the European economy and the leaders' economy of of the of Europe are regressing. If they have been ramping up at something, thanks to different areas, but we have nothing to do with it. European countries denied, rejected to have our energy resources, and we haven't rejected them so far. Till now, there is a, a Nord Stream 2 pipeline in the Baltic Sea. The German authorities can only can just press the button to begin functioning, but they didn't do. They don't do it because of its political convictions and thoughts. There are all areas in which there are d different conditions for negotiations for businesses, and there are different conditions in the fiscal area too, and uh, we have nothing to do with it. This uh, triggers uh, corresponding reactions because people see how the, their quality of life lowers, but uh, we have nothing to do with it. We, we see it as an attempt of transferring responsibility for their wrong actions in the economic and uh, internal policies sector. In the uh, economic area, experts notice that in the United States and Europe, they leverage the climate uh, agenda and without having any arguments from the point of technology, they close everything related to atomic energy. And in other areas too, they close all that have to do with different kinds of energy. And someone considers that Africa can function without these types of energy, but they impose on Africa and in other developing countries with emerging economies. Maybe it is about effective methods to preserve the environment, but they don't have money and they don't provide money for it. But at the same time, they impose new colonizing instruments when they compel those countries to depend on the Western technologies and they provide loans with uh, horrendous, uh, horrendous uh, loans and it is another purpose of colonialism. So we have to observe the, the implementation of policies in the finances and people are afraid the, the 
are afraid and re regarding the escalation of uh, the conflict in Ukraine and in the Middle East, but we have nothing to do with this escalation. So they always accuse to, to those on the other side, but so we must think that that if they are willing to solve the situation. We have a couple of minutes more. Let's give the floor to Russian media outlets. Let's begin by the left wing. Yes, the, the young women from there. Scanius Arabia from the United Arab Emirates. There are several messages that said that Moscow can uh, provide assistance in the case of the Israeli incursion. How these attacks? Uh, how can Russia provide assistance during this escalation? I, I guess that we are, well, we are very concerned about the, what's been happening in the region, and uh, Russia is not interested in the, uh, that uh, the worsening of the conflict because we we won't uh, gain anything from it. We only have more problems regarding the help to Iran. Well, we are in constant. Uh, contact with the Iranian administration, and uh, I think that our role consists of regulating the situation and in the search of mutual commitments. I think that it is possible that no one in the region, and with the discussions we, uh, we have been held in, within the framework of the summit, no one wants that the conflict be aggrava uh, aggravated. Dear Mr. President, I, I am from Kyrgyzstan, representative of a human rights organization. I represent not only Kyrgyzstan, but also the uh, Central Asia Society. I want to congratulate you for this summit in Kazan. And equally with other persons we we know how you work as president and the west attempted to undermine your work but it failed and your political position was supported by the 25 countries antonio guterres the un secretary general and other organizations attended this summit and there have been other historical uh, events, and we see the multipolar world in order. And in the meeting, you have been addressing different questions and issues, and also the Israeli actions. Iran gave a blow on Israel, and then there were messages about the preparations of attacks, and I have a proposal to make that for the BRICS countries with the presence of Russia, they must give an answer in the case of an, ag an aggression of other countries, and f uh, concurrently, the Russian ships can provide assistance to these countries and put an end to this aggression. Another thing that I want to say is that the United States and the West say that President Vladimir Putin rejected the negotiations, but you have presented your proposals and but you haven't rejected these negotiations. Please, 
my respects to others. Your colleague has a re has asked uh, your relation my our relations with Iran and the decisions to provide them assistance. And I have said it, and I want to repeat it. I think that there's no no other person in the world that uh, that feel pain about what's been happening in Gaza because over 40,000 people have been killing in that in that place and so we have said how this conflict can be settled to uh, the only way is to eradicate the causes and the, the main cause is the absence of the Palestinian state and so we must comply with all the council security decisions and we must work with all participants to uh, for to stop the conflict to aggravate and we must uh, work with Israel because they have been facing a, a terrorist attack uh, last year and so we must uh, mull over the situation with tranquility and attention and not favoring those disproportion disproportionate actions and uh, disproportionate proposals and we must uh, work on reducing the confrontation also in the Lebanon. I think that it is possible, but we can be cautious. We have to act with caution. And I attend to, to be very careful because uh, each work can worsen the process. And it is very important, this uh, affair. Regarding the negotiations with Ukraine, we are very grateful with President of Turkey, Erdogan, as on its due time, he allowed us a negotiation platform. And during these negotiations at the end of 2022, we have, we have written a final document which was authorized by the Ukrainian delegation and then it resigned to, to, to it and the minister, the, the assistant of Mr. Erdogan, the, he called and said that, that there were new proposals that prevent these uh, discussions. And then at the next uh, day, uh, well, I said that we were willing to discuss, and uh, but the Ukrainian um, part side said that they, they wa weren't allowed they wasn't allowed to, to talk with us. And so, as we know, in the parliament, there were there have been proposals and a plan of, of victory. And regarding the victory last year, uh, attempting to, to make uh, a counter attempt, so the 16,000 people lost their lives among uh, or, all casualties. So in the last month, in the Kurds region, 26,000 casualties between deaths and injuries, injured. Last year, in the counterattack, the uh, Ukraine lost. I don't want to be confused about it, but I think that they lost 18,000 machinery units, but they, I think that they applied uh, less uh, equipment because there are less uh, soldiers in the Ukrainian army. But uh, based on reality and on what's been happening on the ground, it is better to sit at the table and to negotiate, but they don't want to. The Kiev authorities don't want to. And I think that because the beginning of the peace negotiation, they it will lead to the celebration of the Ukrainian uh, presidential elections, and they are not ready for it. So 
what are you willing what are the are ukraine what is ukraine what are is russia willing to to end the conflict with ukraine we are willing to consider any variation of peace negotiations according to the situation on the ground Thank you very much, Mr. President. I represent Saudi Arabia. Please, I, uh, the, the BRICS group right now, it is not in the stage of a platform, but we can call a central we can call the BRICS a centralized institution entity can you provide the the arab translation the arabic well i think that in the current stage of the BRICS, now the BRICS needs a ruling a central ruling to become to a, a center and to guide the contacts all over the world so the country that presides the BRICS right now tomorrow can be substituted for another country that can be less effective in this sense and so russia i would like to create a mechanism for interacting with its partners so is it possible it is possible if the new development blank can get in touch with other similar banks in the world that's why we need to create funds attached to mutual investments and last question you have argued about the joining of Saudi Arabia to BRICS. Well, first of all, regarding the organization within the framework of BRICS, it is now an organization. It is crystal clear. You've got, you've, you are right. We have to link the work of this organization. We will be, we'll be, we will be thinking about it, about it, and we will tackle this but each country is self-sufficient and wishes to consolidate and develop this unity in a sincerely way so i don't think there's gonna be any failure in the work of the BRICS. i don't think it it could happen but at the same time we want like to uh, have much bureaucracy and we want to want to provide so many uh, officials in luxury cars and have a bunch of employee, employees and high salaries and that uh, that we don't know uh, what they will be doing so we have to set out the work and we must think about it and regarding the development bank I said that we have this new development bank which by the time it is not that much bigger but it has financed uh, over $32 billion in investments and regarding the uh, process of investment, which is very important for Saudi Arabia and Russia and other countries like China and India, it is paramount to have the possibility to invest in a secure way in markets of rapid development and it is something important and in the, our proposal consists on it to create this platform of investments and we are in permanent contact with Saudi Arabia with pre in, in the prince we have very good relations with the the, the prince and the king of Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, in the BRICS summit, uh, the Saudi Arabian delegation have been participating, and we hope that we consolidate our relations. Please, if you, 
what what have you drawn there i can see it well i would like to ask a question in portuguese i my name is bianca i am a correspondent of globo news and which is a main chain of brazil and the question is about venezuela yesterday Nic president nicolas maduro a, thanked about the efforts and his participation at BRICS, but Brazil is against. So I would like to know if Venezuela can join BRICS against the will of Brazil. And another question about Ukraine. Uh, he, he also thanked Brazil and China in the solution of a conflict uh, in the political uh, solution of a uh, conflict with Ukraine. I would like to, to ask uh, from one to 10, what are the possibilities that this pas uh, peaceful plan be successful in Ukraine? And what is, what is, what is not possible for you? Well, it is hard to say, I don't think that it would be necessary to mention indexes or figures from one to ten because I don't want to to sound it uh, ugly. But uh, the attempts of celebrating negotiations and after the uh, re uh, resigning of those negotiations, the high representative of Turkey uh, called from New York, and then there there was a pronouncement about. Uh, on the initiative of the Black Sea to circulate freely on, on the ships and maybe uh, to get to an agreement related to nuclear energy. We agreed on that, but then the Kiev administration said that they weren't, they wasn't willing to, to negotiate. And so then I said uh, you must clear your your mind about it. Uh, these are very complicated partners. It is hard to assess the, in figures of one to ten because the behavior of Kiev authorities is very rational today. Believe me, believe me. I think I I know what I am talking about. I am not going to provide any more assessment. I think that they are provocations. The Kurs province is related to the to the interference and the, the U.S. electoral process. They want to demonstrate the citizens, the future voters, that their investments in Ukraine have been worthy at any cost, at all costs including the price of the lives of their soldiers. They are working for it and not for the, the benefit of the Ukrainian state. Therefore, it is hard to assess it in figures. It is practically impossible. So concerning Brazil, the, um, the assessment of Brazil of what's been happening in Venezuela, we know it. Our stances do not coincide regarding Venezuela. I said it openly. We have uh, talked it. We have been holding phones with President. Uh, we, we've been holding conversations by phone with uh, President of Brazil. Venezuela is fighting for their for its independence and sovereignty. I recall that. The opposition leader, after the previous elections, went out to the square and said that before God, he was considered president. It is uh, to laugh about it. And we debate on the situation then with the U.S. administration. I recall that they supported and continue supporting the opposition in Venezuela, but they remain silent, they laugh about it. It is ridiculous. Any person could go out and raise the, the, their eyes to, to the sky and say, the, the, I am present. And it hasn't to be like that. There are electoral proceedings, procedures. They have to go to elections. And I think that President Maduro won the elections 
and uh, formed its government and so we wish him success to his government and him and I think that Brazil and Venezuela within the framework of bilateral re, uh, uh, dialogue they must clarify the, their relations and I think that President Lula is a president of honor and so I am sure that from the objective point of view he will tackle this situation as it is due and he asked me to say some words to president of Venezuela so I hope that the situation can be normalized regarding the admission of Venezuela and any other state in the BRICS it, 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 has, it is only possible in the case of consensus we have a rule to admit a candidate in the organization so it is needed all the, all participants votes without it it is impossible to give this step please don't upset with me but my colleagues are expecting are expecting me in our bilateral meetings thank you very much I am s very sorry please don't upset thank you very much to Kazan, Russia, where President Vladimir Putin offered the final statements of the 16th BRIC summit. In his remarks, the president highlighted the work of the nations of the Global South during these days of debate and unity. During the summit, the leaders and representatives of the member nations and guests agreed to build a fairer future together based on equality and constructive discussions, the Russian leader said, and also reaffirmed the BRICS member nations' commitment to promote a multipolar world based on international laws and based on traditional values of democracy and respect. Regarding the hot topic of this summit's agenda, the conflict in the Middle East, the president remarked the claim of the BRICS to put an end to the escalation of the conflict prompted by the government of Israel and the end of the suffering of the peoples of the region. And also regarding to Venezuela, President Putin reassured Venezuela's right to defend its sovereignty and self-determination. This is all for the moment. Stay tuned with From the South.